Hi, it's Ingrid. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to do something I have never done before, but I've seen like a lot of different people do it, and that is reading one star reviews of my five star reads. I'm a little scared. I think maybe I need the reality check because sometimes I rate a book and then like a month later I was like, what? Why? That's not a five star read. So like I've been trying to get better at waiting with rating it until like I've thought about it. So some of my older five star reads aren't five stars anymore and sometimes I read the reviews and I think like oh that's a good point maybe I should lower my rating but I wrote down all of my five star reads I think I counted 34 in 2022 and 2023 so that's what we're gonna do so I'm just gonna open goodreads and then read some reviews there's a chance I will be hurt so like I don't know if I should start with like my absolute favorites or if I should like ease into it a bit but we're gonna see Obviously, Lee Bardugo is one of my favorite authors, love everything she puts out. And a few of her books have been 5 star reads, same with Ali Hazelwood. So I think I'm gonna wait with those for a little further on into the video. I'm gonna start with something that I don't care about that much. Let's do... Okay, I'm gonna start with Fourth Wing, because that's like a very current thing. I'm just gonna check this. I'm scared. I don't want anyone to see my camera in my window. The fourth wing. I really love that book. I gave it five stars, but I know that there have been some different opinions about it. So we're gonna see if we can find some one star reviews. There's a few here. I don't know if the oh, this is too long. I'm not gonna. Why are they so long? I don't want like a full on essay about why you don't like the book. I want something short. How are you writing this much about a book you haven't even finished? Did not finish. I'd like to know if I'm actually reading the same book as everyone else. This is the worst piece of literature I've read in a long while. I got to chapter 8. Couldn't go any further. Like, are you guys seeing this? This is like a full-on review of a book you've read 8 chapters of. First off, the endless use of the f-bomb is tacky and lazy if you ask me. So many great descriptive words and all this author can do is spout curse words. Curse words do not a personality make. Neither is being a horny 13 year old. Violet is supposed to be 20 years old, but it seems more like she's 12. I mean, the scar that marks his eyebrows only makes him hotter. Flaming hot, scorching hot, gets you in trouble and you like it level hot. Who talks like that? I'll tell you, tweens. I'll tell you that a lot more people talk like that, actually. And it's not wrong for a young girl to have thoughts. Just because you don't doesn't mean everyone else doesn't. I think I'm rooting for the other side of this conflict, too. What kind of battle strategy is it to encourage the deaths of dozens of people as an entrance exam. Should I say anything? I should have waited with this. Then to be okay with it when you're cats at killing each other. Let's just kill off a huge percentage of our able-bodied young men and women every year. Yup, sound strategy. The big bad school is so scary, it's incredibly cliche, predictable, and trite in all the worst ways. Violet's only personality trait is that she's super fast and smart, and the reason her mother tossed her into the school in the first place is super unbelievable. It's just a weak book with weak and convenient reasons to push the plot forward. First of all, I have things to say, but I cannot because of spoiler reasons. I don't know how to feel, because like, you didn't even finish the book, so a lot of your thoughts about it isn't really... Well, I don't, I mean, they're not really valid in a way. Like, chapter 8, that's pretty early on in the book. Like, if you didn't like the writing, that's one thing, because you can see that, but like, the plot and storyline, you don't know. And like, I can find things that are wrong with it, so. Satan wears skinny jeans. I kind of agree with that one. You have to be a very specific person for you to be, like, able to pull that off. Who had a gun to the head of everyone who rated this five stars? No one. I did in fact enjoy this book very much, so take your little superiority away. I don't care. I don't get this one. Because this person rated it one star, but then wrote Satan can spit on me and I would ask him to do it again. No thank you. And then she commented, no, the one star is for Satan only, so... Hate the book, love the character. You all must be joking. Personally, I love these types of reviews more. Instead of people like writing full on essays about why you disliked it without finishing it, just having like a fun little comment. That's fun. 
I'm gonna find another book now and see what we can find. I searched up Heartstopper. Unfortunately, I did read this review before turning on the camera again. But this one just made me angry. I'm gonna read it for you. I'm sorry, but I'm actually a bit triggered right now. A few things first. This game recommended literally everywhere, so I guess advertising did its job. Okay, well done. I picked it up. I didn't like the art, but that's because I'm super spoiled by the amazing artists I've been following through the years. The story, well, you know the drill. The guy on the team who comes with the label straight on his forehead falls for the awkward but super cute, naturally funny and amazing guy from the back seat. I was going to give it more stars, as I thought I'm the problem. But the implications and constant hints straight people are the bad guys just by default kind of pissed me off. I won't dig deeper, I just want to say that people's overall shitty personalities are gender and sexual orientation neutral. Thank you. So basically, this is a straight person being angry that the story focused on the queer people who are the main characters and that a gay person who was bullied for being gay was careful around straight people the same straight people who bullied him like did you not read the story like I, you don't have to love the story but like at least make sense in your arguments it's giving homophobic i love the comments on this though the story never portrays straight people as bad to be it. I don't know where you saw that. I agree. There was nothing bad about it. Fever. Fever made me read it. Okay, I think I'm gonna move over to... Like, I don't want to read a bad review of Crooked Kingdom because that is my absolute favorite book in the world. But maybe that will make things more interesting. I'm not ready for this. I will not tolerate my bad talking of my favorite little thing in the world. <laughs> I can't read this one because that's a spoiler. But this one at least didn't give it one star because the book was bad. I just didn't like what happened and I agree. I tried. I really did. But Bardugo's storytelling does nothing to me. This is such an overrated book together with Six of Crows. Absolutely not. I love it. I love her writing. I love the storytelling. Everything is amazing. I'm changing my rating from three stars to one. I'm sorry, but no matter how good the rest of the story is, that ending just completely destroyed the entire series for me. I can't enjoy any of the rest when I'm waiting for that event to happen. I'm done with this book. I'm done with this world, and I'm pretty sure I'm done with Lee Bardugo's books in general. Excuse me? You're basically see saying you like the book, but because you didn't wait. Oh no, he's my father. I cannot have the camera in the window. If he's coming home, like, whoa. This isn't really working, is it? This isn't going where it was. Okay. Basically, this person is saying that they love the book, but the ending ruined the whole series and you're not gonna read the author anymore because you didn't like the ending of one book. Like, I was... I didn't necessarily want the ending, but I still loved the book. It made me feel a lot of things. Why are all the reviews so long? I don't want that! I think Lee Bardugo has a large enough fan base that she doesn't even try. Again, don't get it, because I loved it. Boring like the first one, but I still got attached and now my heart is broken. Again, I like those reviews. I didn't think it was boring, I thought it was very interesting and I was intrigued like the whole way through. But anyways, you do you, I guess. DNFing it at 25% because I just can't stand it anymore. This is a very bad Six of Crows retelling. It's exactly the same. They have a new heist, they plan, then something goes wrong. But I do not care. I have one question for Bardugo. Does she know any other words besides said and answered? It was laughable how many times she used it. Try to google synonyms next time. Her writing style is horrendous, the classic telling not showing. I feel like because she already had her success, she doesn't care what she writes and how she does it. 
She thinks people will buy it anyway, so why make it good? I read the next sentence. This is... I... I absolutely hated Cass. He is annoying and evil and also psychopath. You don't believe me? Here's a definition for you. Psychopath. A person suffering from chronic mental disorder with abnormal or violent social behavior. Doesn't it just describe him perfectly? And people love and worship him because he had sad past? LOL. How? How? Like, if you think this story isn't for you, I get that. But how do you hate Cass? Like 99% sure he's my favorite book character ever. Like I don't. I mean I feel like he he does some messed up things, but like a lot of his actions are justified. It's not like he goes around killing innocents or anything. Like I just no don't get it. The next one. That's, this is the same review, by the way. Inej is boring and mean to Cass, and she's in, like in love with him or whatever. She knows he has issues with touching people, so she doesn't want to be with him because what? They can't have sex? That's not love, honey. Um, they do in fact love each other, and I don't care what anyone says. But I don't think she cares about that. Nina is suddenly a special snowflake, the only one immune to... Harem. She now has special powers because reasons. The one character I cared for, Jesper, is now also a one-dimensional figure. Wylan is just whining all the time. Who else is there? Matthias? Can't say anything about him. I hear he gets more character development later, but I can't force myself to read it. Plot is non-existent. I thought the whole time they're gonna try to save Ines, but no. We get her back by chapter 10, and then we're just gonna repeat what we did before in Six of Crows. I have all the same issues from Six. Their age, the whole... Excuse me? I know this is a very unpopular opinion, but we all like different things. So this one is not for me. I'm very confused here. I skipped a part of this review, by the way. I have all the same issues from sex. Their age, the whole raping and murdering teenagers thing, and all the tropes. Like, what are you talking about? I don't get it. I'm just very confused by what this person is reading. My rating doesn't reflect the amazing writing, I'm just bitter about the turn the plot took. It wasn't what I wanted, I'm petty like that. Again, I get that. That hurt me. I'm gonna do red, white and royal blue, because I feel like that's been very relevant lately with the movie coming out and all that. One star. This is the most sexless book I've ever read. Okay. And then the comment. The way that everyone complains about this book having too much sex in it. Like, what is it? Do you want it or do you not? Do you really rate a story about the amount of sex? Like, I get it if the whole story is filled with it, but like, you're too little. Not everything has to be... spicy. 1.5 stars. God, this feels so harsh, I'm sorry. Review deleted, lol. I don't know what it said before, but people seem to agree with it. This book is unbearably cheesy and possesses zero literary merit. Like reading Tumblr tag me meta, but worse. I'm hor horrified that it was called Exquisite by the... Exquisite by the New York Times, which has clearly fallen into disrepute. Whatever. Don't really understand all of that. Not an English speaker. They, these reviews are kind of boring. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna continue later because it's very dark outside, so bye. I'm back. The lighting is a lot better now. It gets dark so early, so it's kind of hard to film videos because I have to do it early when it's the light out. So we're gonna try our best to do it now. The next book I'm gonna search up is Things We Never Got Over. I really love that book. I don't know exactly what it is about it that I loved so much. I don't remember. Like the thing with me is I love a book, but then I forget about it so soon. Like. Filming wrap-ups especially is always hard for me because I cannot remember a single thing about a book unless I'm like laying awake at night and thinking about it. But as soon as I sit down to talk about it, like my mind goes back. But things we never got over. I really love that book. I felt a lot and um, I love a book that can make me feel. So I'm gonna go and see if I can find some. Okay, there's a few. Hopefully they're not too long. Stupid. The way I lost all of my brain cells with this book. These people are apparently 36 and 43, but 
They talk and act like children. Everything was so cartoonish, from the way they interacted with each other and other people, like what? Goes to show you when the youngest character in the book, who is 11 years old by the way, is by far the most mature character here. I hated it. Okay, the age thing. I didn't really think much about the age thing, I guess. Seeing that they are in their 40s. I agree with that, like they didn't seem like they were that old. But also, I don't think their age really mattered much to the story, like I don't think about their age at all. I think it was mentioned like once or twice. So it's not like an important part of the story, you can just read it and just imagine them younger. That's what I did. You are in your 40s and decided to pee in your backyard. That one, also, I can understand the whatever about that one, because you have a fully functional bathroom. Why go outside? Unless like you wanted your neighbor to watch you naked. Which is something he could do, but still, like, you have a bathroom, use it. Like, if you're out in nature, fine. But when you're in your house, like, at your house, you walk out instead of to the bathroom, that's just weird. Wish I had the power to go back in time to steal the manuscript for this book and burn it. Like, I'm, I understand that people don't like the book. Like, we have different tastes, and some people will love it, some people won't. But I don't understand the hatred for it, like, I don't see anything that could be hated like if you don't like it that's fine like there are books that i don't necessarily love but i don't hate them like um i could go outside to murder i dnf that one i couldn't get through it i think i was in a slump that might be why but still i didn't necessarily love it i didn't like it that much i couldn't continue but i'm not gonna hate on it because i know i understand why people love it it's just I was kind of bored. Same with... What can I say? Any books? The Last Dragon King. I read that in September. Or, wait. Yeah, I think I read it in September. I didn't like it. I dnf it. I actually disliked it very much because of the writing. But still, I'm not gonna go out of my way to, like, burn it. Like, if people don't care about writing or don't look for the same things i can understand why people find it enjoyable because i guess the plot line of the book was interesting at least i was interested when i read the back of it and like i have hated books before like cersei probably the most hated book i've ever read but still i understand why other people like it it's like i'm not gonna i think some of these are a bit extreme like I'm, i can hate it in the comfort of my own room i don't need to like burn someone's work for it. I know people are joking, by the way, I'm just like, I don't understand the the level of hatred people have for books they don't like. It's kind of hard to find reviews that are short, because people write very long reviews and I don't want that. Rock, paper, scissor, that's a very recent five-star read of mine. I don't think people can hate that one, because that was a good book. Oh no, I removed my rating, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> hate that. One star reviews. Mostly four and five stars, but one star reviews. <laughs> this one's kind of funny. I feel like this sentence was a dare. The woman wore her bitterness like a badge. The kind of person who writes one star book reviews. Challenge accepted. I think that one was funny. I like that one. Take the scissors, turn the book into paper, hide it under a rock. Like, these are my favorite types of reviews, they're funny. One of the worst books I've ever read, Zero Plot and Truly the Dumbest Storyline. I just don't. Like, well, there was a plot. Maybe you weren't interested in the plot, but there was definitely a plot line there. Like, a lot happened. Like, I just don't understand, because, like, there was so many things happening. So I don't get it. Mmm... I'm free. Worst experience of my life. I can't. Why? Like, I don't want the long reviews, but right now I want it, because I want to know what made this so bad. Because I really enjoyed it. I feel like I can't find any good reviews, though. Like, well, bad reviews, but good, interesting ones. I see people do these videos, and they're so fun. Did I ever do Red, White, and Royal Blue? I think maybe I did. Or didn't I? I don't remember. Did I do Crooked Kingdom? Yeah, I did. Which one? 
should I do with the love hypothesis? The Star Wars fanboys will probably be there. Um, one star reviews of the love hypothesis. The first book I really, really loved and became obsessed with. I don't know what kind of drugs you all are on, but I evidently did not receive my portion. I don't think Raylos deserves human rights. Sorry. So if you don't know this, like the author of The Love Hypothesis, Ali Hazelwood, she's a big Raylo fan. Ray and Ben Solo, Kylo Ren. And I guess she used to write fanfics and this book is like kind of based on that ship. But like... And then the comments on this, this is objectively true and you should say it more. Like, someone ships two characters that you don't like together and you're saying they don't deserve human rights. I know it's a joke, but like, don't you think it's a little too far? Because like, there's a lot of ships and characters that I don't like, but I don't need to hate on others. Like, you're not superior because you don't like a ship. Like, like how stupid are you to think that you're better than someone else because you like, don't like something that they like? And also, you don't even have to think about Raylo while reading this book. It doesn't, it's not important to the story, it doesn't really take a part of the story at all. So it's just you hating to be stupid, so. The love hypothesis? More like the hate hypothesis. I hate this book with everything I have. BookTok will pay for its crime against false promotion. Where's the false promotion? Because like, all I've seen about this book is exactly what is in the book. That's why I read it. Boring, overhyped, boring. Like, I feel like every book is overhyped, but it's kind of like your own fault. Because if you interact with that kind of things, you're going to get that kind of things. Like, you could just, you know, when people talk about a book, you can Google the book, read about the book, instead of people's opinions. Like, if you go on book talk, which people usually complain about, people are obviously going to talk about the books that they love, and then they attract an audience that loves the same books. So if you take a recommendation, it's because you take a recommendation from the same group of people who have the same interests. Sorry, my mother came upstairs. I don't remember what I was saying. Bo overhyped. That was what I was talking about. Boring and overhyped. I don't remember what I was saying though. I... How far did I get into my little thing here. Basically, I'm gonna repeat myself probably, but like when someone posts something, they attract the audience that shares their opinion. So when you take an... If you take a recommendation from that group of people, obviously they're gonna have the same opinion. That doesn't mean you are. So you could just like research the book on your own time, look it up. Is this something I would be interested in? Maybe I'm gonna give it a shot, try it out. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you do. Like, Sarah Crowley and Destiny said, well, I like my favorite YouTubers. I watch them every time they post and I listen to all their recommendations. That doesn't mean I buy everything they talk about just because it's hyped up. I will either look at the reviews. I try not to do that because that kind of ruins it for me. But I go to the bookstore, read the back of the book and then see, is this something I would be interesting, interested in or not? And if I am interested, I'll buy it. Usually not the first time I read it, I will pick it up like 10 times and then actually buy it. But I'm not gonna buy it, well, I've learned that with Destiny and Sarah, I usually will like it if they do. But that doesn't mean that I will just buy every book that's hyped just because it's hyped up. At least not with the expectation of loving it. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna stop there. I don't know if I have anything else. If the video is too short, I will be back with a few more, but I'm gonna stop there. I hope you enjoyed. It was fun. I don't know how interesting it was for you guys. I... I don't like reading reviews, good or bad. I like listening to them, but reading them just isn't fun for me. But anyways, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, lovers.